Hey guys, I'm Aaron, and this is SketchUp Square One, where we take a look at the basics of SketchUp. We look at how to use every single tool in as many different ways as possible, and today we're going to take a look at the Rotate tool. Okay, so the Rotate tool to start with is the tool you would use if you want to rotate something, spin it. I want to take this thing and I want to move it around a central, central point. The Rotate tool can be accessed using the Rotate command on the main toolbar. That's this little two arrows chasing each other in a circle. It is on the large tool set. If I go to view tool palettes on Mac, toolbars on Windows, you can turn on the large tool set and it's right here in the middle. So you're right there, same little icon, just smaller. And I can click on that to start it. The shortcut key is Q. So if I go out to select and I tap Q on my keyboard, I get in there probably because a capital Q kind of looks like the compass widget that shows up here when I want to use it. That's, that's what I can think of is this right here, well, it's connected to my cursor right now, looks more like a Q than most other letters. I guess that's because you can't map zero to it. I don't know. But yeah, Q. This is a Q. Q for rotate. All right. So rotate works very similar to the other modify commands in that I can pre-select geometry and then choose the command to come in and rotate that selected geometry. Or if nothing is selected when I pick it, it will allow me to hover over geometry to rotate. So right away, you can see some of the issues with hovering to rotate. Um, if I wanted to rotate these two lines, uh, I can't do that by hovering over them unless I just move perfect. I can't get three lines. There's no way for me to get like all these pieces, this face and all the edges. I can't do that because the hover will only let me get the pieces that I'm directly over at the time. So generally with, with a command like rotate, I'm going to pre-select. So I'm going to pre-select this line. I'm just going to click drag right over that. It's going to highlight and I'm going to click rotate. Rotate is going to ask me to click three times. The first time is going to set the plane of rotation and the origin of the rotation. So the plane is defined by that compass. See right now it's blue. That's laying flat on the ground on this ground plane. And the origin is the point I click on. So I'm going to come click on this end point. Boom, right there. Now, I am going to click two more times. This is sort of my from and to point, right? So this is the point I want to rotate from. Click there. And I'm going to drag this around. This is the point I want to rotate to. And I can see if I watch over here, that is at 90 degrees. So from starts again zero, doesn't matter where it is, it'll start at zero there and I'm gonna bring it around 90 degrees, click again. So that's rotating. Pick your point, click your from point, like a handle, rotate it to where you want it and click again. As I rotate, it is jumping the angle that it's rotating. I have, I have snapping turned on there. So if I do come up to window and click model info, under units, you can see enable length sna angle snapping is turned on and it's currently set to 15 degrees. You can set that smaller or larger. If you want to go to a specific amount, so if I wanted to go, say I want to go 22 and a half degrees, I could click right here, pick my origin, pick my start point, start to rotate it, and then type in the exact value. So 22.5, enter, and it will jump to that orientation. All right, let's look at moving more than a single line. Let's grab this face and all its edges. This works very much the same. So if I come in here and I click rotate, again, pick my, my face that I'm gonna rotate on, my origin, click a from point, rotate and pick a two point. Pretty easy. I can use that, I've been doing these two on the, on the blue plane, but if I come to the side like this, I can click on this point on the red axis, pick my from point and rotate that straight if at any point while you're in rotate, you need to change your view. So right now, maybe maybe Laura's getting in my way and making it hard for me to snap to 90 degrees. I can click the scroll wheel on my butt, mouse to, there we go, get so that I can clearly see where I want to rotate that to. All right, pretty easy. So what if we want to rotate a lot of geometry? What if I want to rotate all the faces and edges that make up this cube? Well, same thing. Just going to come in here, click and drag to select all those pieces, and then I'm going to go to rotate. So we could do the same thing we did before. I could pick a point. I can click from, I can click to, 
Oh, so easy, so so good to do. But I don't have to use those points. If I want to, I could use something like a midpoint. So I grab this by the middle, and I could rotate that like that. Same thing here. You can see when I hover over this, inferencing locks me to the, the face of that, that face that I'm on right now. So when I click right here, I'm now rotating in this kind of strange out there face, and now I have this rotated in all kinds of weird geometry. Pretty easy to do though, because all I have to do is use inferencing to hover and rotate that. All right, so I'm gonna do one more, we're gonna rotate one more thing here. I'm gonna grab this. This right here is actually a group. So it is all the geometry, rather here I had loose geometry. The cool thing about loose geometry is I could come in here and pick just this face, and then I could use rotate to really mess with it. So if I started rotating that, look what I'm doing to that cube. Rotating it, breaking the geometry, making a mess of it. But rotate will let you do that if you grab just a portion of the geometry and start moving it. I can't do that with a group. A group is treated as a single thing, but one of the things I can do with rotate that I haven't done yet is I can pick a point to rotate from that is totally disconnected from the geometry. So I can click right here and say move it from this point to, and then I can move around. So maybe I want to move it to 30 degrees. If I want to, if you watch the modify key right down here, option on Mac, it's gonna say control on Windows, I could hit that, so I'm gonna hit option once, and look what happens now. Now I'm moving a copy and not the original piece. So I can go put that where I want and click, and it'll create a new copy at that location. Right now, before I do anything else, if I don't click anything else, I can make multiple copies each at the same angle from the one before. So if I hit 5x, it's gonna make five copies, each of them 30 degrees from the one before. If I wanna change, I'll type 11x and hit enter, and there I get a full circle, each of them 30 degrees from the one before. Well, if I only want a half circle, I could say 6x, and that will back it down. As long as I don't go into a different command, I can keep typing different values and it will let me change that number. So I'm gonna go ahead and select this piece right here. I'm gonna move it. I'll move a copy. I'll hit option and use move to set a copy right here. And I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna hit rotate. I'm gonna pick a point that I wanna rotate from. I'm gonna hit my modifier key option, control on windows. I'm gonna bring this around 180 degrees and click there. And this time, rather than typing the number of, number of times I want to repeat that same rotation, I'm going to divide that rotation into smaller pieces. So I'm going to type forward slash six. And look what that does. That says, gives me six copies evenly spaced along that rotation from the first to the last. Again, I can change that. I can say slash 12, and it'll give me twice as many. Slash three slash four, slash five. So that is called a radial array where you're making copies around a single point using the rotate command. All right, last thing I wanna look at, this is a fun one, this is really cool, because let's say I want to rotate this cube. So I wanna do something like this. So if I take this piece right here, I can hit uh, rotate, and if I look at it from the side, I, it's real easy for me to get on this green axis and just click here and rotate it up like that. If I wanna do it on something like this, that can be kinda of tricky because I don't necessarily have the correct angle that I wanna rotate along. But if I click on a point and drag my mouse along a line to another point, it just created a surface of rotation along this line, perpendicular to this line, it's gonna rotate now, so I can pick this up. Okay, so let's say I wanna do something like that with this piece right here, but this one, so if I, if I hit, uh, select this one, I'm gonna hit rotate, and I can see I can come in on my green axes, right, but that's gonna be different because the green is on this surface. This one's rotated at some degree away from it. I can set 
basically aligned to rotate along by clicking and dragging. If I move over this face right here and I click and drag to this point, look what it did. It set my protractor there perpendicular to the line I just dragged across. So now I can click this point, I can bring it up to 45 degrees just like I did with this one, except that one is actually rotated perpendicular to that front edge the same as this one was. I know that one's a little bit kooky, that's, that's going to take some practice, but if I ever want to rotate on something that I don't have an inference for, I can click rotate, I can click, drag, release, then pick my from and my two points. Again, there's a lot of little pieces that it can use with Rotate. This is the beauty of SketchUp is we have these simple commands, but then we have different ways to use them, get a little bit deeper into them, and learn more and more ways to manipulate geometry using those commands. Uh, hopefully you like that. If so, click like down below. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. We create several videos a week around here, and you'll be notified of each and every one of them if you subscribe. Most importantly, they'll leave us a comment. Did I miss something? Uh, what tool would you like to see next? Let us know your thoughts down in the comments below. We like making these videos a lot, but we like them even more when they're showing something you want to see. Thank you.